Hi, in this video I'm going to show you my top three tips to speed up your video editing process in DaVinci Resolve 16. Hi, welcome to SharingYourPassion.com. This is Chill and let's get it on. Tip number one, if you have two types of hard drives like I do on my laptop and one is a lot faster than the other, then I suggest moving your media storage to the faster drive. In my case, I have a laptop with a fast solid state drive and a big regular hard drive. DaVinci Resolve needs a media storage where it can do its internal workings, whether it's caching some kind of um, vid video processing needs, um, some thumbnail creation for your timelines, all kinds of other internal workings that DaVinci does. It, it needs a temporary folder system where it can work all of this um, magic in the background. When I installed DaVinci Resolve, it automatically chose my D drive, my slower hard disk drive. And I only realized that recently. In an ideal situation, the system should have known to install that in the faster drive, which is the solid state drive. Some say solid state drives are five to 20 times faster than a regular hard disk drive. So you can imagine how how much faster Resolve can do things quicker and easier because even uh, sol solid state drives use less resources. It's quicker, It's there, there's nothing spinning, files are being read and written really quickly in a solid state drive. So this tip is to move your media storage into your faster drive and this is how you do it. You go into DaVinci Resolve right here in the upper left and go to preferences. Okay, and under the system tab, go down to media storage. When I looked at this for the first time a few days ago, it showed that the D drive, D DaVinci videos folder directory was on the top and there was no C drive. I had to do this manually. So when whatever's on the top is the one DaVinci Resolve uses by default. So what I needed to do was create the DaVinci folder in the C drive, which is my solid state drive, by just clicking on add. Look for your fast drive, which is my local disk C. And here's where I created a DaVinci folder and saved it. But once it was added, it was below the D drive. So that meant the system was still using the D drive, the slower drive. So what I had to do was remove the D drive and then shut down DaVinci Resolve and start it back again. Then it only had the C drive to work with, the correct drive. I just added this D drive again just to show you uh, what it looked like before. So I'm gonna remove that right now. I don't need my D drive DaVinci folder. So I'm going to remove that. I only want my, my faster drive showing up here with my dire that directory and save. DaVinci Resolve will only start using your new preferences once you shut down the program and start it back up. And in that way, DaVinci is a lot faster now because it's, it's just using the solid state drive when it makes all these things happen in the background. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to change your video view options in your timeline. Let me show you what I mean. Let me start by bringing down some video clips. And a third one. You see how those thumbnails were ge being generated? By default, DaVinci Resolve uses this film type of view. This is the most accurate display telling you where you are on your clip. But in many cases, I never need to really know exactly where I am on, on the clip right here. My focus is really up, up here and also on the sound. I'm Normally my main edits are in the sound where I cut out all the unnecessary uh, speech parts that I don't want in the in the video. So I'm really focused on the speech part, the audio, and what's up here. I don't need to see all these details here, but that is kind of taxing on your system, especially if you have a slower laptop. Mine's pretty fast, so it can generate these uh, thumbnails really quick. But if you do a lot of edits, you're gonna see it start to slow down. Okay, let me do some cuts here. 
I'm going to do control B. See how it has to redo all these, these thumbnails. And I'll make another cut here. Select A to select all the tracks. Control B to cut. There you go again. It was reproducing all the clips. So that's unnecessary for me. I don't need that. And it's slowing down my process. Especially once you have a lot of elements here, it'll, it'll start to slow down. So just one more cut. There it is. And also when you scroll over or you jump into to um, a further point in your timeline like this, let me click over to the right here on the scroll bar. It has to generate these, you know, it takes a while. And if you have a slightly older laptop, it's going to take even longer. Mine is only a one year old gaming laptop, so it's pretty fast. And I have a solid state drive handling all this, all these computations. If I had a slower system, these refresh thumbnails will take a lot longer. I'll, I'll, I'll do another click on the scroll to the right. See, it has to go in there and just pull out each scene and fill that up for you. So my suggestion is to speed this up, to speed up your editing, change this view. So you do that by going here. This is the uh, sort of like your timeline control. This is the video view options and it's defaulting to the film version where, where you're seeing a thumbnail at every segment. If you change it to the middle, which is called thumb, then it's faster because now it only needs to generate the first and the last frame of each clip. So let's scroll to the right. See, it didn't have to generate these because it's, it's already, it's only showing the very end right there and the very end right here. So this is a lot quicker, uses a lot less resources for your computer. So that's a good way to speed up your process. And even if you really know what you're doing, you're working on clips that you're very familiar with, you don't even need the, these uh, indicators anymore, these thumbs. Just use the plane. This is called plane. So there are no images to work with. But you know your stuff. You don't really need to. You see the, the video up here where you are in the, in the process. So that's where I pay attention that and the audio part, I really pay attention. But since the audio part is very important to me, I will go back here and increase this audio track height. Okay, because that's where I can see the waveforms and I, I make my cuts based on a lot of waveforms, whether it's there's a gap in my speech or not. Okay, another thing to do is if you do a lot of transitions using the corners of the images I'll show you in a little bit um, then you need to increase your video track height okay to past halfway when you're past halfway then these little white indicators will show up now and that's when you can fade in and fade out in a transition okay that also works for your audio where you can audio fade in and audio fade out. So that's tip number two. That's how I cut a lot of time when I'm working with a big project and I don't need to see these thumbnails regenerating every time I make a clip or a cut or a copy or a change to the, to the clip. Okay, and tip number three is to use two shortcuts, two very useful shortcuts that I found out recently, which could have saved me a lot of time before. The shortcut involves cutting clips. So normally if, if I have a cut here and I want to make a cut way over here, I would okay, do a control B to cut and then click here and then press delete. Again, if I wanted to cut here, I'd press control B to cut, use the mouse point here, highlight it, then press delete. 
that was my old method of cutting. Let me bring those back. Now I've been using these two shortcuts, which really make things a lot quicker. So position your timeline header or whatever you call this thing um, to the spot you want to cut. And all you have to do is press Control Shift Start Bracket or brackets the starting bracket. Let me do that right now. Control Shift Starting Bracket. So what it did was, let me bring it back. What it did was it cut here and removed that and made this the starting point of the clip and brought that over there, right? So if you're doing a lot of editing and cuts, that little thing, that little shortcut will like half your time. You're, you can do it with one like press of the button instead of two, two or three actions with, you know, button presses and using your mouse to select that. So that's that's really cool when I found that out. The other part to this shortcut is the the opposite end where you want to remove this part. Normally I would go like this, put the header here, pointer here, do a control B for cut. So it's cut there, but I still have this. So now I have to use the mouse to select this, click, then press delete. Okay, that took like three steps. So let me bring that back. Okay, so now all I have to do is bring the pointer over there and press control shift and bracket or the bracket stop. I don't know what you call these buttons, um, but it looks like a bracket and this is the end of the bracket. The other one was the start of the bracket. Okay, control shift and bracket. Whammo. It just cut that in one shot. It saved me the control B, the select of this, and the, the delete. That's like three steps cut down to just one step of the control shift and bracket. Having these shortcuts really saved me some time and also arm fatigue because you know all these extra things that you're doing with your hands and with the mouse and the, the keyboard, the, the less you do, the better it is for your for your arms and you get less fatigued by using these two important shortcuts. Okay, so I hope these three tips to speed up your video editing process in DaVinci Resolve will really help you make things easier, quicker, and less fatigue on your, on your, on your hands and arm. And I hope you can be even more productive with your video editing and your video creation. Welcome to SharingYourPassion.com. I'm Chill, and my goal is to help you transform your passions into an online business. I will assist you with creating WordPress websites, online courses, email automation, membership sites, social media and how to make it work for you, sales and marketing, and more. Basically, you provide the passion and I provide assistance, and let's work to get your dream realized. Subscribe and click the notification bell to set your dreams in motion.